the assumption was that um, the family unit was just that, a unit, and that there was no need for individual rights. They didn't want to put the money into to you to go to college if you were just going to meet somebody, get married, and have children. But it was very difficult for uh, African American women to get professional jobs, even if they did have some prior education. A maker is someone whose efforts help to improve their community and the lives of the people in it. In this episode, we recognize some of Nevada's earliest makers, groundbreaking women who blazed a trail for all those who'd follow. These women help to define our state's past and shape its future. Coming up in this episode of Makers, Women in Nevada History, the Silver State story like you've never seen it before, through the eyes of the women who helped to build it. Hey, wait a minute. Where do you think you're going? Back home. Let's start our story by Just traveling to back to Nevada as it was at the end of the 19th century, a state with little towns surrounded by a vast desert. Its small population centered around ranches and mining camps. In the late 1800s, American women had minimal rights and, once married, little legal independence. Legally, women could not do a lot of things. They didn't have uh, the right to raise their own children, they didn't have the right to run their own business, they didn't have the right to vote. But there were plenty of women in Nevada who succeeded in spite of those barriers. They made the most of opportunities and accomplished amazing things. Recognizing their accomplishments and weaving them into the fabric of Nevada's history is an important undertaking. Many of the white women who settled in the West did so with their families. Helen Stewart, who came to Southern Nevada with hers in the late 1800s, is the first maker we'll meet. Helen Stewart was an unenthusiastic pioneer in the Las Vegas Valley. She and her husband, Archibald, uh, moved here after he acquired the ranch, and she made him promise that they would only stay here a few years. Helen Stewart planned to take her children back home to California, where there'd be more educational opportunities than Las Vegas could offer. At the time, Las Vegas wasn't even a town. It was a remote ranch in the desert with a sparse population and no interstate railroad. Instead, what happened was that Archibald was murdered, and she became a widow who needed to support her children. With all of her assets tied up in the ranch, Stewart stayed and developed it. Eventually, she sold the significant acreage, and that land sale came to play an important role in Nevada's history. Most of us who know the name Helen Stewart think about her as the woman who sold Senator Clark the land for the railroad station and the development of the town of Las Vegas. But there are other reasons to consider her a maker. Stewart became a true community builder. She helped found the Mesquite Club, which is renowned for its community improvement efforts. She's also credited with a number of firsts for women in Southern Nevada. In 1893, she was appointed as Las Vegas's first postmaster. Helen Stewart was the first woman to sit on a jury. Women were excluded from jury service. And politically, the only office that women could hold in the early years was that of school trustee. And she became the school trustee, the first. Helen Stewart was a highly successful businesswoman and a dedicated community leader who lived in Las Vegas until her death in 1926. 